Hey guys, today we're talking about Honeywell using a 3D printed metal part in an actual jet engine. We've got desktop metal getting valued and going public at 2.5 billion dollars. And we've got the Australian Army, the US Air Force, the United States Marine Corps using 3D printing in very new innovative ways. Right here today on Vision Miner 3D Printing News. All right, so let's dive right into a Honeywell. Honeywell's doing big things with metal additive manufacturing. They just got the first FAA certification for the first 3D printed flight critical engine component. This is big because we've been seeing things like toilet seats and brackets and everything going into airplanes, but not actual flight critical engine components. This is a pretty big deal. So basically this is a bearing housing, which is a key structural component in the ATF-36 turbofan engine found in the So Falcon 20 maritime patrol aircraft. So why did they print the bearing housing? Well, it was notoriously difficult to manufacture and it was super cost inefficient. So it's really expensive to make. To quote John Hobgood, this is a major milestone for Honeywell because it demonstrates the maturity of our additive manufacturing operations and paves the way for us to print more certified flight critical parts in the future. It also is a major win for the additive industry as flight critical parts face heavy scrutiny and high standards for qualification and installation on an aircraft. But this shows it can be done. Props over to you guys at Honeywell, great work. Uh, moving right along, desktop metal, one of our favorite coolest looking, best advertisements, metal manufacturing and now continuous fiber composite manufacturing. Uh, they've gone public, they actually got they're merging with Trine Acquisition Corp to go public and they'll be listed on the New York Stock Exchange as DM with an estimated equity valuation of $2.5 billion. Now, when this happened, we actually saw shares in other 3D printer manufacturing companies go up. After seeing a big company like this get acquired and merge, uh, it just raises everyone's faith in the industry, which I also think, considering the last few months of craziness in the world, uh, I think we're definitely on the way up. Additive manufacturing for supply chain management, for getting parts quickly, for not relying on overseas, it's a huge deal. So Rick Fulop had something to say about this. We are at a major inflection point in the adoption of additive manufacturing and desktop metal is leading the way in this transformation. Uh, Rick Fulop is the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Desktop Metal. Cool guy we've actually met before. Uh, and he says that we're energized to make our debut as a publicly traded company and began our partnership with Triene, which will provide the resources to accelerate our go-to-market efforts and enhance our relentless efforts in R&D. That is huge. They are one of the first metal manufacturing companies with a desktop style system and they certainly have done some heavy R&D. Way to go guys! getting merged, getting in there, going public. That's awesome. I love seeing that uh, right up there playing with the big boys. So let's move right along. We've got the Australian Army conducting a secondary two-week field test on the Speed 3D metal 3D printer. Speed 3D, if you guys don't know, it's that big red machine and it prints layer by layer, but it's shooting metal powder at supersonic speeds to bind it without heat, it's a cold process, and it's really, really epic. And they specialize in making net shape metal parts. The Australian Army, during an initial field evaluation, the soldiers moved the machine to several bush locations, unloaded it into different terrains, and then made the printer operational within 30 minutes. The speed and mobility of Speed 3D's system allowed the soldiers to print components on the move removing the need for them to carry spare parts during exercises. The Dwarp Speed 3D system proved capable of printing large metal parts up to 40 kilograms in weight and at a speed of 100 grams per minute, even at 98.6 Fahrenheit, almost 100 degrees outside, and in 80% humidity. This is really, really cool. The Australian Army have, has sought to integrate 3D printing in the operational setup since 2014 with the goal of rapidly producing custom gear for soldiers. So let's come over to the other side of the lake here in the U.S. We've got the Air Force engineers becoming the first to engine test 3D printed metal parts for the U.S. Air Force. 
So this is pretty awesome. We've got Oklahoma City Air Logistics Complex. They've become the first to successfully test a 3D printed metal component inside an aircraft engine. This is on the TF33-P103 engine using the E3 Airborne Warning Control System and the B-52 Stratofortress. Those are some big planes, man. What is it? What's the part? It's an anti-ice gasket. So when they're operating in sub-zero environments, it's a critical part. Basically, it was in short supply and they needed to 3D print it to resolve supply chain issues. And going into that experiment, they actually reduced the lead time from 120 days to just 14 days. 120 days to 14 days. 3D printing, thank you. Air Force, thank you. Uh, Richard Banks, the 76 PMG Delegated Engineering Authority engineer, explains, one of the things we found in this collaboration is that we could potentially solve the supply of shortage by re-engineering and printing something and proving it was safe to fly. This type of engineering makes it easier to source materials, greatly reduces lead time, and ultimately helps reduce the logistical and supply issues. Moving right along, the United States Marine Corps has benefited from Icon's 3D printing technology. Now, Icon is a company that 3D prints homes and structures, and it's the first American company to secure a building permit for a 3D printed house. So they ended up partnering with the, with the Defense Innovation Unit to help integrate 3D printing technologies into military operation. And the main goal was to provide a rapid construction capability to support military crisis response efforts. They actually created a vehicle hide structure for the Marine Corps at Camp Pendleton down near San Diego. They built four individual arches connected to create a final structure of 26 feet by 13 feet by 15 feet. Very cool, very big, good stuff. And lastly, we got some cool car news. This is a little bit old, but Porsche actually partnered with Mal, Trump, and Zeiss to test 3D printed parts in a road car. Uh, they recently developed 3D printed pistons for the 911 GT2 RS with the help of Mal, a German parts supplier, Trump, which is a large 3D printer manufacturer, and Zeiss, which is a German optical and optoelectrics company. Using powder bed fusion technology, Trump actually printed the pistons, which are 10% lighter out of high purity M174 plus aluminum alloy powder made in-house by Mal and printed on the Trump 5000 system. It took about 12 hours to complete, and it was over 1,200 laser melted layers. The news is they passed the first round of bench evaluations. 135 hours under full engine load and 25 hours of drag at various speeds. They played it safe when they were designing it, so they do say they could go even further with that weight reduction past the 10%. Um, and to quote Frank Ickinger, Thanks to the new lighter pistons, we can increase the engine speed, lower the temperature load on the pistons, and optimize combustion. This makes it possible to get up to 30 horsepower more from the 690 horsepower twin turbocharged engine in the GT2 RS, while at the same time improving efficiency. He also goes on to say a particular focus was placed on the outer shell of the piston, or its skirt, and the point at which it meets the parts Conrad, referred to as its pinball, uh, incorporating a cooling gallery into the component, reducing the temperatures of these areas and increasing the overall efficiency of the engine as well. Moreover, employing AI to optimize the piston shape and underlying topology, minimizing the need for support material. As a result, only the hole for the part's wrist pin needed to be removed later in the process. So this really shows going for design of 3D printed parts to be efficient in the process. They designed it, they used topology optimization, which is where it looks organic, and they made it so that it could be printed without support structures. All right, guys, let us know down in the comments below what was your favorite article out of this week's episode. And uh, if we missed something that you thought we should have covered, feel free, leave a link down below, and we will cover it next week if it gets picked. And if you do get picked, you'll get a free sample of nanopolymer adhesive shipped right to your door. So let us know in the comments below what do you want us to cover, what have you seen, and what did we not cover. Um, other than that, 
Yeah, there's always the subscribe button, the like button, uh, you can share this video with a friend, um, you can look at these boxes playing that have other videos that are getting started, or over here, there should be some videos that you can check out, we've got lots of stuff going on, if you've got any questions, as always, feel free to reach out, uh, you can email us or give us a call, we sell printers and we print all day long, so thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.